Hello, my name is Chris Harrison, and this is a, a tutorial um, showing you how to render a site plan in Photoshop. Um, basically, I've created a uh, site plan here in AutoCAD and exported it, uh, printing it to PDF using the DWG to PDF command or using an appropriate software that's able to produce PDF documents. I've um, opened that in Photoshop and typically I bring in separate layers. I'll isolate and I have other tutorials that explain that process about isolating your layers uh, and it makes it easier just to manage the file once you get it into Photoshop. Um, for this uh, for this tutorial, for, these, for the purposes of just rendering it quickly, um, this is pretty simplistic. I just basically merged all the lines. But don't, don't do that. Um, Okay, so I have my lines and I've already gone ahead and created a, a group using this icon here. Creates a group. Delete that. Just wanted to show you that. And I'm calling it color and I've created categories within that group. Canopy, patio, driveway, lawn, layer ones, nothing. Mulch. Okay. Um, one of the questions I get I get asked a lot is how do you select uh, what color? Uh, what colors to use for rendering? And my answer to that is it's contrast. It's all about creating contrast. Um, I like going from low ground being a lighter color and the uh, high ground being a darker color. Uh, but it's about creating that contrast so that when you look at it, elements are easily discernible from one another. And that's what it's about. Um, if you don't have, if you don't feel like you've developed a good color since yet, borrow somebody else's. And I do that by going to, I, and I always reference other people's work um, for inspiration especially when I first was starting out. So I just did a, a a search in Google for a rendered site plan and I found this here. And I liked the uh, the contrast and I figured it would be a good starting point at least for the drawing. So I have this open and I'm just going to select that green color for the canopy and I'm going to select a light green for the lawn area. All right, so I'm going to tab back here, and I have these pretty much done, but I want to show you how I began doing them. So double click and call it lawn, call it lawn too, so I know. I'm going to go to my lines here, and the thing about um, rendering in Photoshop, exported from AutoCAD, exported PDFs from AutoCAD is that you have the ability to do quick uh, drop colors of using your, your magic wand tool uh, as long as the area that you're selecting is closed off and I'll show you that by demonstrating I'm gonna hit W for the, for the wand I'm on my lines layer I'm gonna click in here where the canopy is and you see how all that's selected for me because it's closed off and to note you you don't want to have your anti-alias on because uh, then it would allow your contiguous rather your one needs to be selected if it's not it will select everything that's white um, so that's if you're having those issues it's either your contiguous is not selected or you have a break in the line so I select here I'm gonna hold the shift key and select that little nook right there as well in this area in here I'm gonna go to canopy well I was on lawn to create another one for canopy Okay, I'm gonna flip back to that color, my foreground color. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but I have a tendency to do that. And I'm gonna hit Shift F5, and you can select so it's your fill command, and you can select foreground or background or whatever you want to put in there. Pattern. I'm gonna use the foreground color. Select OK, and it'll drop that into it. So you already have a quick mass of color. And the thing about this, you can always adjust it as we go along. We just want to get you know a basic contrast going on and in areas rent you know rendered fills and so that we can go back and then we can adjust each layer we can adjust the color the lightness of it and add effects to it to give it more richness okay so I'm gonna do the same thing with my lawn area come here so I selected that I'm on my lines layer selected in a point and let me get where else can I put lawn at I guess it's right there I can't select lawn here because it is breaks and I've already done this so I'll show you that in a second but I'll go to my lawn layer here I'll flip back to the lawn color shift F5 okay 
So you already have that kind of going on. Um, I want to do a mulch color. And I would do this basically for each section. So I would, my vegetable garden, you know, all that would be mulched. That would be mulched. All that would be mulched. And then I basically, I, there wasn't a, a specific mulch color to select from, but I know it's going to be on a lower level. So I want to get a, a color that was close to that lawn. So I ended up selecting that. And that's what came out. Um, so you see that all right, create, kind of creating that flow using the same fill command. So let me zoom in. Now for areas like this, and let me just turn, let me select that mulch color. Uh, turn that off. Let me create a mulch too. Let me show you how to do air if you do have a break in a line. It's basically just using your brush or just using your um, selection tool here. So for instance, I'm zooming in. That's I'm using my command plus on my, my Mac and my wheel on my tablet. But I'm just coming down here and see I'm just kind of selecting it as I go around. You can get anal about this or you can kind of do it quickly with the brush and the choice is yours. Alright, and come back. Create another one, so temporary, so I can show you that. And basically, the same thing, Shift F5. And there it would be. So that's how you would do the areas that have breaks in the lines, or you would just simply use your brush. Hit B for brush. And you would just use your mouse or your stylus and just drop the color in. And that's how you would do that. So I'm going to delete that layer. I already have that done as well. So my mulch is in. And the same thing I had to repeat it here with the lawn because we had breaks. So I went ahead and completed the lawn color. So now that we have these base colors in, we can begin to have a little bit of fun. Um, I might should have put a mulch layer in here. Let me fix that. Back to mulch. Shift F5, foreground color. Yeah, because all that's going to be a planner around, and that's actually a wall of a seat. Um, okay, and also I have a driveway color that I've selected using that. You know, I selected my driveway, so I've dropped that in there as well. So there's my driveway color. So I got this thing pretty well built. Um, at least the the base colors. And that canopy is a little dark. The scale of this other drawing is much larger. And sometimes you'll find with larger drawings you can get away with them different you have to use different color schemes. But this still is an exercise in contrast and we'll make this look good. But we can I'll show you how to tweak color here in a second as well. Okay, so let me use the selection tool. I didn't get all that, so I'm just using my brush to kind of come back and touch some of these spots. Make sure you're on the right um you're on the right layer. That's important. So I'm going to show you how you can kind of come up. So sometimes when you use the lines as boundaries, it colors in the, in the majority of the area, but if you want to touch up and make it look real sharp, you kind of go back in and just kind of touch those corners. And I've done that with this canopy. So I just wanted to show you that as well. Okay, so now that I have this, like I said, we begin to add effects to it. Um, a quick effect that you can do with Canopy is to drop a shadow. I'm using this styles icon at the bottom of your layers menu and you'll see drop shadow and you can affect the distance and as you see as I move the distance in the spread you see the shadow appear on the page. And you kind of give it the depth. Kind of subtle. Alright, something else you can quickly do is to do an inner glow. We're going to modify that a little bit and we're going to go darken. And we'll add a little bit of noise too. And we're going to click on the swatch and we're going to click on the swatch of the tree. 
and I like to make that a little bit darker. And you're able to change the size and choke of that to kind of give you that ring. Turn that noise down. Kind of give it a lip. And you can play with this as much as you want, you know. A lot of this is kind of tweaking and playing. If you don't like what you have, and you keep on messing with it till you get something you do like. So I'll go something like that just for now, just to kind of show you guys. Make that a little lighter too. All right, well, for the sake of this happy, that's kind of something quickly. Um, you can also go back, like I said, and make this click here on the swatches, make that a little darker. And actually, I don't like that inner glow effect. It's kind of, I don't like the way that looks, so I'll just turn that off. Um, let me create another layer. I'm just going to be playing with some colors here. Like I said, I made that green a little bit darker. And I'm going to select a brush, hit B for brush. And I'm going to use this brush here. And I'm going to look at the. Oops. I'm going to put some scattering on it. Shape dynamic. I want to make it pressure sensitive to my hyper pen and stylish. But still, out of the way. I don't need to add any noise to it. Smoothing. Yeah, I like the wet edges though. And let's just see what that does. Now make sure you're on the layer because you don't want to ruin the layer that you're on because I'm trying this thing out. Let's just see what that does on top of that. I'm trying to catch your edge. You know, just playing with this. And some of these techniques you'll borrow too. I mean, all these things that are changed, everything I've learned. Um, Rendering by hand, I've applied basically to Photoshop. And with that, that photo sh rendering by hand was my start, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean you just can't start on Photoshop. It's just it's about technique. Some techniques are going to be replicable on um, using a pen and stylus, and some you just have to kind of mimic using other features um, Photoshop offers. But it just makes things quicker and easier, I think, you know. And, if you don't like something, like I said, like if I was running this by hand, I'd be devastated at the change all that. You know, somebody said they didn't like it. You know. Or if I didn't like it. Alright, let's just build the color up. I'll make it interesting, more interesting. And then I like that it kind of looks decent to me. So I'll go back to and I'll burn the edges using this icon here. And burning just means making it darker, basically. So I kind of make those edges darker and all around. And try to give it a little bit more depth. There it is. I don't play with this thing, tweak it. It's kind of looking like a tree massing, looks decent to me. Um, similarly, I can adjust the. Along the bottom of my mulch, so let me just. A quick tip if you have things that are. Like I have that extra mulch that I don't want right there and it's on my lawn space right so I know the lawn color is prominent and should be on top of it so why, why was it there? <laughs> oh because it wasn't rendered okay so I'll go back to my lawn I just want to get that little tip right there so it's much such that I'm on my lawn layer every time you use your brush go back to the one that you you want to use Turn my dynamics off. I don't need any of that. Uh, 
there. Come on, brush. And just color that little area in. All right. Um, same thing with the mulch. You can add some noise to it. Let's try adding some effects. Uh, we'll just try, let's try the inner glow here. And better luck this time. Darken. You can touch that color. Get a little darker on it. Some noise with some size on it. Looks better, it's softer, you know. Kind of give it some texture. And really, that's a technique. You know, also, while you're on the layer, you can also use these. Like, I can do filter, you can add noise, and I would call it gazing. And you can see how I'm showing you what it's doing. You can lower the amount that you add to it so it's not as loud. Kind of get the right amount. Oh, I'm happy with that. That's cool. It gives a little texture and the zoom out. It's not as flat, you know? Then likewise, you can go back in and use that same speckling technique to keep your drawing kind of consistent. I'm just going to burn the edges of some of these now. And kind of come in and kind of create that sweep. Giving it some interest. And just using your mouse to do this for a stylus. Just kind of wrapping these edges quickly. I'm gonna get some contrast in the building to make it interesting. And the more you do anything in life, I think the better you get at it, and this is no exception. So I'll practice, 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 and you'll be rendering and darkening the burning the outline of shapes that look like baseball diamonds and in no time. Alright, so we kind of have that. And I remember keeping in mind that too is also going to be a base layer, so I would put shrubs and things on top of that. Um, Lawn, let me add some noise to that. Filter, add noise. Yeah, I like that. I know the same thing with the lawn. I can kind of burn some of that too. Kind of lightly going in and just touching some of these edges. And you can already see this by burning it and kind of creating that variation. Contrast, you're kind of helping popping your, your drawing. This is very easy, you know. Just kind of touching those edges. Kind of accentuating that grading point as it comes down, these grading lines. All right. So now we're beginning to kind of see things a little bit better. All right? Like our rendering. Another thing you can do as you build this, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that on top of my canopy because I like it so much. That's fine. Um, is that you can change your color contrast, or the actually the hue, you can change the hue of it, or the color of an object. So this one I have the canopy, so I'm going to go here to image, um, adjustment, I'm going to go hue saturation, and you'll see that, you know, I can change it. You know, maybe it's fall or it's a kind of, kind of caustic landscape, I don't know. Change the lightness of it. You know, anything you want. You could also do colorize and actually change it a specific color that you select. You know, say you say you want something like that. Uh, that's something cool to, to know about too. It makes it much easier to make those changes. In that case, image adjustment to saturation. I think I like to make that long 
little lighter maybe. Yeah, whatever. Okay. And that's basically how you would build these in your base area colors and add some texture to it and you can add things to it, give it make it a little bit more whimsical. You can you sample this color, get it on the lawn and make it streak a little bit darker maybe. And I can take the brush and always create a layer. You're not sure about what you're gonna do if you're playing around. It's cool to play, just make sure that you can fix it if you don't like it. And you can do streaks and things like that going across your drawing. I don't know, sometimes we do stuff like that. I don't know. Kind of gives it that more hand rendered feel. And there's a lot of different things you can do. There's just some things that I do some, from time to time on my drawings. I don't know. Anyway, so you can kind of play around with it and do things like that um, to just give it a more hand rendered feel. Um, shrubs. Okay. Pretty easy thing to do too. We're going to do that in a separate group. We'll call this plant material. And I'm going to go ahead and move my canopy to plant material so that I can manage that hierarchy better. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it shrubs. And I'm going to take this marquee tool, use the elliptical tool to make a circle. All right. And I'm going to kind of pick a green tone. And I'm just going to fill that. Basically, I just made a, a quick shrub. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a perfect circle, but very interesting, but if you had to do something in a hurry. The cool thing about that is you can just copy and paste it. And we'll do a little bit more to hook it up. Um, I've got a brush. Let me use this brush again. I like those dynamics that we had going on there before. So I want to have some scattering, and I like that wet edge. And I'm going to go back to my layers and I'm playing so let's create another layer. Let's just kind of give it some, you know, some play so it's not just so circular but you keep that basic shape. Let me make that darker. You know, you're just kind of building these things up. Yeah. Maybe a little bit darker. I typically go three layers in, three hues, and kind of call it a deck. And I like that, so I'll merge that with that shrub. And I'll go ahead and I'll burn it again. Always burn the edge, kind of gives it that depth. You know, it's already dark a little bit, but make it a little darker in the edge. And then really to make it pop, you go back and dodge, which is the opposite of burn. Gotta give it a light spot here, like the light's hitting it there or something. You know? And then I'm gonna drop a shadow on it. There. And I'm gonna adjust the spread. Oops, distance a little bit. I'm 
looks decent. Okay, so there goes a shrub. Let's zoom out and see what it looks like. You can always look back in different, you know, different scales. Zoom step back. What does it look like? You know, probably it's real close to the canopy, so I might want to adjust that a little bit so I can go adjustment hue saturation. I'm just playing with it, just trying to see what else I can get out of it. That's fun. Great, so now you have a shrub that you can use, right? And what's cool about it is now you can just copy it. I'm using my marquee tool. I'm going to select it. Hit V for my move tool and hold Alt. And that allows you to now copy that shrub. Alt again. And I'm building a row of shrubs. Use your marquee tool again, which you have several of them made. Hold Alt. Now you can copy the whole group. Okay. I'm gonna keep this thing playing boring just for the sake of the demonstration, of course. Okay. And then you kind of got a row of shrubs that easy. I'm gonna transform because I got off kilter a little bit. I just transformed it and you're able to rotate by hitting um, Control T or I'm using Command T. I believe it's Control T on the Windows. Kind of zoom out. And you'll see that my plant material is above my shrub stuff, so that's why it's appearing that way. But I can quickly be begin to build you know these this plant material base. Same thing would be done with a tree. I want to make a tree and just have a larger uh, canopy. Uh, call that a tree. We would pick a color. Let's do a one military. All right. And I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use that brush. I had the technique on before. I liked what it was doing. Sample that and let me just go now, make it darker. I'm going to go in here and make the brush a little bit bigger. Kind of give me some variation, and we'll make it so, you know, plain. And you guys see that in itself using the brush technique, kind of gives it this cool effect. Um, to deselect something, it's a quick tip. I'm using Command D, I believe it's Control D, whatever that equivalent is on the, on the PC. Let me go back in here and make the shapes a little bit more irregular. This looks more like a tree. Go back in here and flip that. Again, you're just, you're just playing with this thing and different combinations of the colors and whatnot. Just start burning it, and it tends to help a lot. <laughs> kind of get that edge, you give it that depth. There you go. It's kind of looking like something now. And then let me just dodge the portion of it. kind of have an ornamental tree. That you would place. You know, or perhaps
traps right there. How about that? And what's cool about this too is you can also put these things on multiply on different layers. So that, uh, now right now you wouldn't be able to see the shrubs beneath it, but I can in this state you're able to put multiply. Oh, because it didn't work too well. How about we leave it normal and just reduce the opacity some? So it's semi see through at least. And you can begin to play with all those things to kind of get that uh, effect that you would like so that you can show some more important features. Or you could just do an outline of a tree in CAD and just drop those things in, and whatever you want to do for your rendering. But that that's the basis of, uh, of rendering, really. Uh, a lot of these techniques you'll just have to practice on and, and kind of develop your own style for some of these things. Um, I also have a plant uh, library that you can access. And I'm not sure which drive it is on school, but you should be able to ask one of the professors, then they should be able to guide you to it. But and we're we're trying to grow it so as you all develop your pieces you can add things and everybody can kind of have a a library to pull from when they do their renderings. And the idea is that in the future if you have this thing done already, and if I wanted a tree for another drawing, I can just come in here and you know, copy the tree, paste it, and pull it to my next my next rendering so I'm not spending, you know, forever rendering my plan and I can spend more time on the actual design, which is the most important part of it. And what's cool about this too, like I said, you can use, say I want to do, um, I want to make this some type of maple or oak, actually oak out there. Uh, even though it's pink right now, it's ornamental, I can go here to my image adjustments and human saturation and I can change that thing's color. You know? Now you have an oak. Just that quick. So it just allows you to have, you know, um, and also you kind of, you know, it might be boring to have the same aesthetic and go back and kind of tweak things. But it keeps a certain consistency. It just allows you to flow a lot faster. And then again, you can take that, copy it, and drag it over. Another tree here. And like I said, they really, they really, ultimately, I don't need to drop any shadows on those things. Let's drop some shadows. Really help it pop. Another thing you do is just once you have that one shadow you like, you can just kind of hover over it, hold the Alt to copy it, and then drag it to the other tree, and it'll drop that same effect. And then you see you have some pretty decent trees in the making, and a beginning, hopefully, of a beautiful render. And that canopy is a little dark, but you, know, you could always, again, edit that. And when you get stuck also, you you know you ask questions um, and ask Google or ask a classmate or you know send an email out. There's a lot of good forums for rendering um, for land, I think with Land 8 Lounge is a really good forum. There's a lot of information out, out here. Um, you just kind of want to seek it. And there's, <laughs> it's not changing the drawing, is it? Yeah. Whatever, you play with it. But that's basically the how to render a drawing and start putting plant material in and different objects in. Um, the more you play with it, the better you get. If you have any other questions, feel free to, to contact me. Uh, my email is w.chris.harrison, H A R R I S O N, at gmail.com. Um, or just catch me in class. And I hope this was helpful. Bye.